Hi, I'm Jonathan Malant, and today I'm going to show you how to make honey taffy using four ingredients. This recipe is dead simple, and the two main ingredients you will need is one cup of white sugar and one bear's worth of honey. One of the reasons I like this recipe is that it lets you show off some of the more subtle flavors of regional honey where a lot of baked goods that use honey, you can't really tell the subtleties between different types of honey. This recipe really shows it off. So I recommend going and buying a local honey, one that was made within 20 miles of where you live. I have here a really nice wildflower honey that was made in the hill country outside of Austin and it tastes really good and this recipe is a really good way to show that off. The next ingredient you'll need is almond paste. And it looks like this, I've cut it up into large chunks. You'll need two ounces of it. It comes in a box that looks kind of like this. Its uh, main purpose is to add to baked goods and you can also roll it really thin and put it at the bottom of pies if you want your pies to have a little secret. And the last ingredient we'll need is one and a half cups of powdered milk, which is added to a lot of really chewy candies and it's really good. We will be making our syrup in a medium-sized pot. I recommend uh, using one that's a little bit bigger than you think you'll need because this uh, syrup will start to foam near the end and you don't want to have to uh, move it to a different pot because the one you picked was too small. We'll put this on to medium-high heat and add the sugar and the honey. We will use a wooden spoon to stir this pretty much constantly until it reaches uh, 280 degrees, which is the soft crack stage, which is the stage of sugar making that we use for things like taffy and uh, other types of soft ingredients. Once the uh, sugar has dissolved into the honey, I'm going to add a candy thermometer and stir until we get to our final temperature. Stirring helps make sure that there's not too many uh, pockets of hot syrup and cold syrup, which will make the final candy better. And you really don't have to worry about uh, crystals forming in this, because even though we didn't use uh, corn syrup, the honey will help prevent big nasty crystals from forming. Also, uh, this is also the time that we will want to add our almond paste. While the syrup is heating up, we can prepare the rest of what we're going to need, which is an 8x8 baking pan, which will be the landing vessel for our final candy. And set aside your powdered milk and grab a, a large work bowl, which we will need in just a bit. I'm going to add a little bit of no stick protection with a piece of aluminum foil and some no stick spray. Our sugar and syrup are well on their way to being ready and it'll start to foam up when it reaches about boiling. So um, I'm going to go ahead and add my cooking thermometer and I also have my infrared thermometer standing by which I like to use to figure out if there's any cold spots and I'm actually getting pretty close to 280 so it'll, uh, it'll sneak up on you if you're not watching. I just now realized that my candy thermometer does not have the clip on the back so it's going to fall into the syrup so I'm just going to use my infrared thermometer which will uh, work just fine. As soon as it gets to 280 degrees, I'm going to move it to the large bowl that I have standing by and pour it in and let it cool down a little bit more. We have reached our temperature and we're going to pour our delicious candy into a bowl. A heat proof bowl would be ideal. Now once again, we're going to use our thermometer, in my case, an IR thermometer, 
And we want this to cool down to about 180 degrees before we add the uh, powdered, uh, powdered milk. That way it doesn't burn. So I just like to uh, give it, a, give it a, a little stir. You can blow on it if you want, or you can just sort of let it sit, uh, sit and cool down for a while. I think it usually goes down about 20 degrees every couple minutes. So just check back on it regularly and then we will add the powdered milk. We have reached 190 degrees. It's been about uh, eight to 10 minutes and we are ready to slowly dump in the powdered milk. The trick here is we want to uh, put in enough powdered milk that it all gets soaked up, but not so much that we have a lot of leftover powdered milk that's not getting soaked up by the candy. Let's see, at this point we're at, see we're still at 160 degrees, so that's still too hot to handle. So I'll keep kneading it in a little bit more. All right, at this point, we can go ahead and flop it into our prepared greased tray. Try not to get any of the powdered milk, just the, uh, just the candy. Dang it. I'm gonna kind of roughly press it into the corners. It kind of messed up the foil a little bit, but it's still really hot, but it's still pretty pliable. The pan is not strictly required, but I like it because it helps me get a good thickness and a good square. Looks pretty good, and it actually is the same color as a bed of honey, kind of. So we're gonna let this cool down until it gets to maybe 120, 110 degrees. Uh, and then we can uh, cut it into strips and little bite-sized pieces, and then let those cool all the way. And there you go. It may not be as soft and gooey as original Bitto Honeys, but they are extremely delicious and they will taste a little bit different depending on what kind of honey you use, which I think is really cool. And they make a really great addition to your homemade Halloween candy arsenal. If you like this video, you'll probably like some of my others. I would love if you left me a comment with a recipe you'd like to see me try. Uh, like the video if you thought this was a cool recipe and subscribe to my channel to see videos similar to this one Thank you for watching So what does raw prime rib look like? Well inside this cheesecloth I have the piece of prime rib that I bought last Sunday It is now Friday, and I have been letting it dry age in my fridge for that five-day period I just wrapped it up in a